there are obviously the FAQs and all that sort of thing, but as, you're, as we're in the room um, together, um, and in order to, um, to make the next session flow, what I'm proposing to do is just stretch the next 10 minutes or so into conversation about um, any questions, and, and if there's time, I'll chip in some thoughts on the themes. Um, Susan's got to go. Thank you very much, Susan. Oh, yeah, I'm very sorry. It's the closing date for our knowledge exchange hubs today, so I need to get back. So you've got something to do. I hope you have a good day. <laughs> Thank you very much. You. Um, so I, I'm going to start while you ponder, ponder your other questions. Um, if, I, if, if I'm an arts organisation that already has an in-house team, has already done lots of this sort of stuff, uh, is it impossible for me to succeed if I bid on my own? Um, comes up as a logical question to me. We're not going to accept bids from people working on their okay. own, right? because this is a collaborative program. Yep. If you feel you've got a big in-house technical capability, we want you to work with arts organisations who don't have that capability. So it's absolutely a collaborative bid. So we don't mind you using your own house technology team, but we kind of need you to spread the love and work with, a, with an arts and cultural commercial organisation that doesn't have its in-house team. Okay. Um, it sounded... I don't, this is not my thing, I don't bid for public money for these sorts of things in my life generally, but it sounded quite an onerous process for 50 grand. Um, I mean, where's the rest of the upside? I mean, is, is it learning? I mean, what else do I get if I'm an organisation involved? I mean, it's wonderful in lots of ways, but some people are thinking, I've got lots of things to do at the moment. Why this, why, why concentrate on this fund rather than another one? Well, I th you know, I, th I think everyone, everyone, including you, Anthony... Yeah, but you said I could be as naughty as I wanted. So you I'm can, no, no, you can. But everyone wants to see the sector thrive, Completely. don't they? Yeah, so yeah. the point is, we hope that um, uh, proposals which are accepted can, one, be exemplars for um, testing R&D, yep. and exemplar means not just the most fantastic creative proposals but also kind of help other people who may be in this space come to some answers and that's why in effect the quid pro quo of getting public money mm -hmm. is a focus on the learning and the insight so so successful proposals really will be contributing to a body of knowledge and really will we hope sort of demonstrate a bit of thought leadership in the in the arts and cultural space that's not absolutely to denigrate any other people who no, may be course. doing interesting things no of course and and finally then well if anybody's got a question stick your hand in the air um finally um is, is artistic innovation sort of um it feels like it's sort of the brighton that runs through the rock it's got to, there's got to be artistic innovation in there but it's not sufficient on its own is that a, is that a fair reading of what you're saying Ex exactly what we there's some wording that we deliberated very carefully on the website, which is we've, we've said that artistic, this isn't solely f about artistic innovation, okay? However, artistic innovation insofar as it meets the objectives of the project, which is to engage in, engage in audiences and uh, look for new forms of revenue or new business models. You know, if, if in the course of that, there's new artistic expression, that's fine. That's fine. That's um, and that, that that's, makes sense. I was just double checking. I've got the right on the stick. So I've got a couple of questions. Um, mics are coming your way. So I'll start um, with these two gents here, and then I'll go to Jane, who I know. Apologies if I don't know you. I can't recognise you from a distance. Um, so we've got sort of five or six minutes. So we'll probably get four or five questions, won't we, realistically? So if you could give us your name and your affiliation, that'd be great. Thank you. Hi, I'm Alan Boyd from Boom Interactive. We're a digital agency. John, is there, there's a start date envisaged for the project, 15th October. Is there an end date in terms of publication results? Yeah, um, rep I think we are we are hoping certainly that um, end of March 2012 okay. will be the kind of end date. Um, but look, this is a very open application. Um, so uh, what we absolutely recognise is that there may be pre-existing plans that organisations have, you know, um, lots of organisations have already scheduled activity for their audiences, you know, and they're working to a timetable. And so we hope that we can be as flexible as possible. Thank you. John Heights, William from okay. Panlogic, William McCower. Uh, we're a technical agency, uh, so we're looking for a partner. Uh, two questions. So the first question is, could we partner with a number of different organizations, I'll be limited to any partner of one, so maybe that's the first question. And the second question is a bit more complex. Do you have a preference uh, for a best of breed? Do you have a preference of the type of arts organization? I mean, obviously there are you know, fantastic arts organizations which are exemplars, uh, but are not national, or, you know, are 
work in a very specific field, or do you have a preference for a... I imagine, imagine the answer is going to be we don't have a preference, but if you could give some guidance, um, or uh, one which is <laughs> distributed <laughs> but uh, is not an exemplar in any particular field but has lots of uh, national trust, for instance. Yeah. So arts institute, I mean, you know, or is it the VNA? Or do you have no preference and the VNA will be fine, even though it's you know single entry and it's large and has lots of funding? So, so William, the, your first question is by far the easiest. Uh, you can work with anyone and a number of people. In fact, we want both arts and cultural organisations and technology um, companies to be so, as socially promiscuous as they can. Um, we put no limit on the number of applications that come in from arts and cultural organisations and we put no limit on the number of collaborations that you make. Absolutely not. I think what's absolutely sort of uh, strange and refreshing is the, abs is the very wide um, uh, aspect of who's able to apply. And we did that very purpose purposefully, really, um, to we want to choose the best ideas irrespective of where they come from. And the benefit of collaboration, I think, is that for those organisations that don't have the thinking or the technology capacity, the collaboration should help them in that process. But Andrew, I don't know if you want to because we Because we really want to, if possible, sort of test across the themes and we want um, a sort of diversity of projects, it's true that if every single, it'd be unlikely that the ones we come up with will all be an app doing the same thing, if you like, as an idea. We, we're trying to test um, ideas that we can share that kind of follow the, the territory. Um, it's probably worth me saying now at some point that we see, I mean, I mentioned this larger fund, around 20 million, um, and, the, and that's across a number of years, and it covers a very wide broadcasting digital area. It's not just this particular part of it. However, I think this particular part of it will, you will see it reflected in the, in the fund, in the program later in the year. And so this pilot is really important because it shows us the demand and the sort of sense of how many ideas are out there. Um, so, in a way, we really want to see what comes through this because clearly only a small number are actually going to be supported directly through this fund. But we will be looking really closely at what's coming through all of those applications and that will um, significantly influence how we as the Arts Council think about this um, 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 greater resourced um, strand of, of, of our thinking of our programme going forward. Okay, we've got lots more questions. Um, 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 whoa, whoa, whoa. Can I have my second question? Also? No, you can't. <laughs> oh, right. <laughs> yes, you can. I, I thought I answered it. I mean, we're, oh, we're, we're not. Um, it's the quality of the. It's the quality of the idea. We're not. Abs we're absolutely not precious or giving no, guidance about did, who yeah. you were. I thought you meant another question. Could yeah, I just make a clarification? I think I probably said March. 2012. I'm sorry, it's October 2012, we expect. Yeah, otherwise you wouldn't have barely started. Sorry. Okay, so I'm going to take two or three more questions. Yeah, sorry. Yeah, um, Jane Finnis there was next in line, and I'm coming to Gent there, and we'll see how we're doing for time. We've got more time, of course, so don't worry too much. Jane. Um, hi, I'm Jane from COTS24. Um, Andrew, you just answered a little bit of my question, but I wouldn't mind some more clarity. It's about the relationship between this pilot and the 20 million. You, you talked about the that fund as being a strategic fund, which I kind of get, kind of addressing the five goals, the bigger issues, the learning from the pilot. But obviously, a lot of digital projects are all have R&D at the heart of them all the time. So those, and it's just where do they meet? Is this pilot going to be to start and finish before the fund is launched? Sounds like they're overlapping. And so how are you going to start the strategic fund before you've done your R&D? Good question. Maybe. We just have a cup of coffee. <laughs> yes, they do. They will, in a sense, in some ways, overlap. We won't know all of all the learning results, if you like, from the projects from this before we are um, giving a bit more information about this program um, later in the autumn. But giving information about the program doesn't mean it kicks off in the autumn. It might be kicking off. Next are you April. are you hoping that this R and D work will be more experimental and that the strategic fund is more kind of addressing wider needs, bigger stuff? It's just kind of, I, I, I have ideas that I would like to develop, and it's trying to pick where to place the idea so that it's best suited, and a lot of the work we do is quite strategic, but R&D is at the heart of it because it's all new territory, sure. it's all new engagement, it's all new business models, it's absolutely in that territory. No, I understand it's that. It's trying and to kind of unpick it, really. You're absolutely right. All of the, I think pretty much all of the thinking we've got so far about the various strands of, the, of, of this um, 
uh, larger fund from our perspective, um, uh, involve R&D, of course, absolutely. They're about enabling, they're about catalysts, they're about people's ideas that can be shared. I think we just want to, there is, a, there is a sort of timing thing, you're absolutely right, but we just want to learn and get a sense of what, what does this particular, what's the opportunity here? I mean, we were in a discussion about this the other day and we were looking at the themes and when you look at the one around, um, how's it described, the education resources, yeah. It looks like huge, you know, it looks like how much money is, you know. So it's kind of, it will be, we, we can't, it will be to get a sense of um, what are, what, what, what's out there, what are you all doing, what are the possibilities? Um, and our responsibility as the Arts Council is, is not to, is to think very hard about where we need to place our investment and our time and energy, because so much is happening already and happening without us, and that's a really important aspect of this. But we need to think where us with partners can enable, you know, do what we're doing here, basically, uh, enable something specific to happen that will sort of accelerate um, things that people want to do anyway. Thanks, Andrew. There's only time for one more. And the chap over there was first in the queue, I'm afraid. Um, um, and then we'll break for coffee, and then we will do, we'll move into thematics and case studies following coffee. Hi, hello. This is um, Klaus Timon with Project Pressure. Um, the question relates to the um, technology partners and uh, also where they're based. So. Obviously, a UK arts organisation, fine. The technology partners, how do you define them? Could that be consultants, or does it have to be all the way to the end product, as in coding, programming, and so Good forth? Question. And do they have to be UK-based, and does the coding and programming and so forth, does that also have to be UK-based? Or are we looking at a more global scale for this? A lot of technology companies are not necessarily only based in the UK. Of course. Yeah. Um, so I'm desperately scanning my FAQ list. <laughs> <laughs> Shall I do a little dance or something while you do that? Probably need something. Uh, I may have to get Angela to nod or shake her head vig vigorously, but <laughs> my understanding was um, proposals we are looking for from England, because f from the arts and cultural organisations, but we've been quite broad about where the technology companies yeah. come from. Yeah. She's nodding at me. So actually, we're not being prescriptive that technology providers have to come from England or UK or wherever. Um, I, I hope that answers your question. In terms of what activity they actually do, again, the definition of a technology provider is very, very broad. The projects, however, we want to see delivery on because yeah. we want them to generate evidence and data so what we are less keen on, I would say, is uh, projects that don't generate that data, you know. And so that may give you an insight as to the nature of the um, technology conversation that you're going to have have with those arts and cultural organisations. So they've got to go into the wild, basically. They've got to get out there and be really used. It's not a wireframe and a pilot and yeah. this would be a great idea. They've got yeah. to get out to the market. Well, pi pilot is a broad definition. Yeah, so but, it's uh, an, un un -work, uh, an, an unreleased pilot. Yeah, we want, some, we want some learning and evidence off the back of them. Now, I have a personal version for conferences that start running late before they get to coffee. I don't know about anybody else, so I'm proposing not to run late. I know there are lots and lots of questions. Andrew's staying around, John is staying around. They will both be outside for coffee, I'm assuming. Um, and Angela is here all day. Um, so, um, and as is John. So we'll break 15 minutes for coffee now and then we'll come back and restart with a very brief intro from me and then our case studies and our session. The objective of that is to give you a chance to sort of just ponder the, the things, the pros and cons and the things that go into digital innovation. Thank you for attention in the first session. Um, have a nice cup of coffee. See you at 11.45.